It is game week. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Inside Seminole Football with head coach Mike Norvell. The head coach will join us next. We've got a great hour ahead. We'll be joined and ask Coach Norvell several questions about the state of his team as they get set to kick things off against Georgia Tech. Then the head strength and conditioning coach at Florida State, Josh Storms, will join us, as well as your starting quarterback, James Blackman. It is all coming up straight ahead here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield IMG College and on ABC 27 for our viewers in Tallahassee. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Inside Seminole Football with head coach Mike Norvell. I am Tom Block, and coach, this has been a long time coming. You signed up here at Florida State. I think it was December 7th or 8th, and plus or minus 275 days. Here we are. It's finally a game week. That has to be exciting, exhilarating for you with all you've been through in this past year. Uh, I can promise you I've had a smile on my face uh, here, <laughs> here about the last week, knowing that uh, everything is building up to, to kick off on Saturday. And, uh, you know, our guys have done a really nice job throughout fall camp. I mean, just, you know, there's so many questions. It's been such a such a unique uh, off season, But to uh, be able to get to this point now, entering game week, uh, there's a lot of energy around the facility, I can promise you. Unique is certainly a word for it, and we'll get into the pandemic-related changes and how it affected your program. But just in general, when you take over a new program, what are the, I don't know if it's one, two, or three key things as you come in that you're trying to establish immediately? Well, you know, it's uh, there's so many different uh, d different aspects that you kind of have to attack. I mean, we, we came in, and I think we had about nine days before the first signing day, so that recruiting was uh, was the number one priority. And then it was getting to build uh, your relationship with the players, getting to them to have an understanding of who we are as a coaching staff, you know, kind of overall philosophy. What are we looking to accomplish? And then it's truly just every single day going out and trying to trying to live that that approach and trying to set that standard as a coaching staff trying to pour into our players uh, to, to, to help hold them to the standard of what they want to accomplish and what we're looking to do as a football team and a program and so uh, you know it's been it's it's been a lot of fun I mean it's been a lot of work you know that's one of the things that uh, uh, you know I challenged the guys the very first day I got here uh, I told them that this was going to be one of the most challenging things that they've ever had to do and um, you know whether it was our tour of duty in the spring uh, you know little did I know we we're going to have a, a uh, uh, you know a pandemic that was going to have to we're going to have to work through but you know th what they were what they were able to do academically you know just the uh, the approach to that and then you know everything we've done through summer and, and fall camp uh, building to this point I've uh, been really pleased with them but just trying to establish that mindset and, and overall culture of what we're looking to do we will get to specifics and we'll take some fan questions talk to individual players but I want to start broad and continue so obviously the pandemic we all know it's been a part of our world when you build relationships and you build trust, you tend to do it face to face. That's what we're used to. And you've had to do that, not the last several weeks, but certainly the first several months via Zoom. So how challenging was that for you and your staff and for the players? I mean, it, it definitely presented challenges, but uh, like I tell our players, sometimes the greatest challenges you face, you know, sometimes bring along some of the, the greatest blessings. And it has really forced our coaching staff to, to find new ways to connect. And, you know, we were, we were very involved, you know, from the day, I, th I think it was like March 12th, um, you know, we finished practice, we came off the field and we knew that that we were going away. We knew that there was going to be a pause in school. We knew that, that we didn't know how long that was going to be. Um, and then during spring break, we, we that's when we came to realize that we weren't going to see our guys for uh, the rest of the, the spring semester. And so uh, we wanted to, to make sure that we were continuing to pour it into them. Uh, we set up a plan as, as coaches uh, from what I was doing each week. You know, I wanted to make sure that I got in front of them as much as possible. So I was doing a weekly video that, uh, you know, that I was able to send to our players just to talk mm -hmm. a big picture philosophical approach. And then, you know, our our coaching staff from our strength coaches to to our uh, to our position coaches everybody involved uh, just you know being able to connect with them to where they were um, you know obviously you know having to, to work through some of the adversity that has shown up we will uh, talk offense and defense in the next couple of segments but uh, as I open up with some fan questions I'll remind our our viewers and listeners the fan questions are presented by Tijuana Flats the Knowles number one Tex-Mex pick and I want to Talk about special teams. You know, we always talk about three facets of the game, but sometimes that's lip service, but it's not with you. So I'm going to begin with special teams here. And actually, uh, this question comes from uh, Fran here in Tallahassee. Special teams has struggled over the past couple of years. What's being done to improve our special teams play? Well, I think it all starts with the mindset and the approach. Uh, I, I believe that special teams units are truly the, the, the backbone of our program. Uh, I know on the day that I was hired, my, my introductory press conference, I didn't talk a whole lot about offense or defense, but I wanted to make a point that special teams was going to be an area uh, that we were going to have a great focus and, and investment into. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that, that is the, that's my, one of my favorite parts of, of, of being a head coach 
coach is that you know when when your special teams you know that that truly is where you get to bring both sides of the ball together and you know we are we are huge on our fundamentals our techniques we try to to have a, a, a very detailed approach to how we want to attack in all of those units and then we let that carry over into to the other sides of uh, of the game offensively and defensively but uh, our guys know our best players are going to are going to make an impact in special teams and if we can if we can have that type of buy in that type of support from our players uh, then I think great things can happen and it's going to make a big big difference in every game two part follow up here so media and fans we tend to focus on the returners, the actual kickers. And as I look at your depth chart that came out today, I mean, you've got plenty of skill with Travis Jay and Isaiah Bolden, Jay Sean Corbin, LaDamian Webb in there as potential returners, and you've still got a kicking battle going on. But but more than that, it's about the other eight, nine, ten guys on each special teams unit because, to your point, that attitude translates to how they play on, on offense and defense. Well, well absolutely. And, and we have to have 11 playing as one. And whether it's a kickoff coverage unit, everybody has a, has a job, everybody has responsibility. It goes from the placement of the kick, you know, obviously, the, the job that the kicker has uh, in that in that regards, but then everybody you know has a responsibility and and what I want to see is is tremendous relentless effort in every aspect of what we do, whether it's a coverage unit, whether it's a turn unit. Uh, we know that we have an opportunity to to make a game changing play with that one snap, that one opportunity, and so uh, you know being able to put our guys in the best position to showcase their skills and talents. Not only does it help our football team right now and 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 you know, kind of help establish that buy-in, but it's also helping these guys for their future. Many of them have dreams and aspirations of playing at the next level and uh, you know when you're on a 53 man roster everybody has to play a role in special teams right. so we'd really try to t tie that together uh, you know just for their personal overall development as well as what can be a real difference on our team. Was there a game or a moment early in your career where you made a note, okay, special teams needs to be better emphasized or this is going to be core to my coaching principles? Well, you know, I, I mean, even back when I was an offensive coordinator, I was I was fortunate to be, uh, you know, to come up under a, a head coach that, you know, that understood the importance of that game. And I, and I always tried to try to you know, stay involved in it because that's that's where uh, I knew we could make a great impact. And uh, I remember when I when I got the head coaching job at Memphis, uh, that was it was a, a true philosophy that we were going to bring in that that was that was going to be an area that we were going to have a, a great investment in time and resources and what we we're going to do and how we were going to attack and over the course of the last four years been one of the best in the, in the country and I remember when I got the job it had been 20 years uh, since there had been a kickoff return for a touchdown in that program's history and uh, you know over the course of the last four I think we returned 11 so we we're you know, one of the best <laughs> in the country uh, you know, during that, that period of time and so and from the players, the coaches, everybody involved, and then you know allowing our players to go uh, go out there and, and, and play the game that they love and be able to make an impact in a lot of different ways. I'll remind our listeners on the network and our viewers on ABC 27 that this is Inside Seminole Football brought to you by Vistar Credit Union, proud partner of Florida State Athletics. Coach, game week, we'll go back to that point. Georgia Tech is first up, 3.30 Saturday, your first uh, outing here at Doe Campbell Stadium officially. Uh, general thumbnail sketch of, of what you expect from the Yellow Jackets year two of their program rebuild under their coaching staff. Well, you know, obviously you kind of touched on it. You know, this is a program that is that is on the on the build. They are on the rise. Um, you look back at last year. You know, they went through a big transition. Um, you know, when you look at schematically uh, from the previous regime to, to Coach Collins taking over, and uh, you you see a, a a culture that as the season went on continued to grow, continued to develop. They were able to. Uh, they played in a lot of close games last year. You know, they had a couple of really big wins, um, you know, for, you know, for their program and kind of taking that, taking the strides to where they want to go. But mm -hmm. you look at their roster now in comparison to a year ago and you see the physical development, the, the size, the length, the, the speed that shows up on film, uh, you know, plus, you know, uh, another year of being within the, the expectations of, of their staff and, and what they want to do. They've got a lot of returning experience. They've added some, some talented newcomers. And so we know this is going to be a heck of a matchup come Saturday as, as we're starting our journey against a team that you know we got a little bit of a uh, you know one year head start in, in in instituting those those cultural values and so uh, we're excited about the opportunity being here at home and uh, you know obviously just get an opportunity to kick it off kickoff comes 3 30 this saturday it is game week folks we are just getting started we will take a break but inside seminal football with coach mike norvell continues in a moment Welcome back to Inside Seminole Football with Coach Mike Norvell. Coach, let's dive right into the offense. You know, offense sells the tickets, right? That's what everybody says, we, and the quarterbacks always get all the attention. Well, James Blackman has been here now for several years, and uh, he earned the starting job. Just tell us what you have seen from James Blackman as you've gotten to know him over the last several months and then seen him in camp. Yeah, James, James has had an extraordinary fall camp, I, I tell you. 
you know, coming in from day one, you know, getting a chance to build a relationship with him. That's a young man that wants to improve. He wants to be successful. He really embraces the work, um, you know, whether it was our off-season training, you know, the film study, the the individual time that he that he poured into learning a new language, a new system. And, uh, you know, as we got into fall camp, you know, seeing him grow in his confidence each and every day, uh, you know, whether it was protecting the football, you know, well, you know, obviously some of the fundamental things that we're asking him to do at the quarterback position, uh, trusting the rhythm and the time of how we want to operate throwing the ball but then you know also a lot of things that we we put on the quarterbacks that uh, you know help make the offense go and that's something I've always challenged our quarterbacks with is you know when you step on the field you've got to make 10 other guys better because of your presence because of the job that you do and I think James really embraces that I've been pleased with the growth that I've seen and and excited about the future of, uh, of what's here in front of them. Well, he's excited. I know we'll talk with him a little bit later in the show. The backfield here the last few years has really been the Cam Akers show, and Cam is now collecting an NFL paycheck and probably has a, a very bright career ahead. You have seem to have been very pleased with your running backs, and I know as I look at the depth chart, Deshaun Corbin is, is there, I guess, uh, along with Damian Webb. But just uh, give us a, a little bit of a – sneak peek of what we can expect for those of us which is all of us who haven't been at practice to see what they can do well you know it's it's definitely a group of newcomers uh you know i think uh, Deont- uh, dante sheffield is the uh, is the only uh, uh return returning uh you know you know back that we have but uh, uh when you look at those guys uh, jay sean corbin we're extremely excited about what he brings to the program uh you know a guy that that is that has good experience you know was a uh, you know was a, a big contributor uh there at uh, at texas a&m as a freshman you know in special teams as well as you know coming out of the backfield uh you know, he's a, he's a big back, but also possesses great speed, catch the ball to the backfield, uh, really uh, like his mindset and the versatility it shows. Uh, Damian Webb was a, was a thousand yard back, you know, all American coming out mm-hmm. of, uh, out of uh, uh, Jones Junior College. Uh, I mean, really impressed with what I've seen from him and just his, his transition here uh, really embraces, embraces all aspects of the game. You know, he, he's a sponge. He wants to learn a uh, very dynamic runner. You know, he's a, has a low center of gravity, great balance, um, you know, been, you know, very, impressed with the progression I've seen from him in a, in a very short period of time. Uh, Lawrence Toafili, I talked about him, uh, you know, on signing day, you know, there in December, expecting him to be a guy that, that I thought could come in and make an impact, and he definitely is not disappointed at all. He is, uh, it is impressive to see uh, just the vision, the explosiveness that he has, expect him to, to really serve a, uh, a, a great role. I mean, Sheffield's got a, you know, has a little bit of experience from the bowl game, and then, you know, guys like Corey Wren and Ja'Kai Douglas, I, I think are, are very talented young men that, uh, that have an opportunity to, to be able to help end up impact this football team. Back to some fan questions. I'll remind you, fan questions are presented by Tijuana Flats, the Knowles' number one Tex-Mex pick. And, Coach, it's probably the number one most oft, or oft-asked question that you've had this year. It's from Jeff in St. Augustine. The offensive line has struggled the last couple of years. How are things progressing with that position group? Well, they're doing really well. And, uh, you know, I, I, like I've said you know, multiple times, I like our young talent. And uh, we've got, we, we got a, a good balance. Uh, we've got guys like Bavion Johnson that have played a, a lot of football here that have, that have kind of been through it, played multiple positions. Uh, Brady Scott, uh, you know, but then, you know, coupled with that with, you know, some, some newcomers and young talent that got a little bit of experience this last year, whether it was a Darius Washington, um, you know, uh, Dante, uh, um, you know, uh, Lucas, Lucas. Yeah. I mean, you know, have an opportunity to play, you know, starting as a true freshman, which is such a challenge, you know, uh, Marie Smith that was able to, to play in four games and still be able to red shirt and then going out to, and being able to get a, uh, a Devontae Taylor love that's, that's really been able to, to come in and, and make an impact. I mean, uh, you know, his transition and what he's brought into this, to this program has been uh, extremely impressive. And, uh, you know, I, I expect that group to continue to grow. We've had some, some, uh, true freshmen that I think are going to going to play a role in into our to our success here later on this year um, when you look when you look at Robert Scott there at the tackle position and Thomas Schrader there inside at guard I mean what they've been able to do in this fall camp I mean I, I, I like that group we, uh, coach Atkins has done a wonderful job continuing to build them fundamentally and and just their overall mindset uh, for improvement is has been been impressive one of the headliners and maybe uh, one of your earliest recruiting wins, if you will, Tamari and Terry announcing that he would come back for another year. He was preseason all ACC selection. That was named last week. Put up huge numbers and, and has a chance to really, uh, not that this is the most important thing, but he's going to be up near the top of all the receiving categories when he's done at FSU. What have you seen from him and then expand it, the conversation to your receiving group as a whole? Well, it, it was obviously great news for our program when Terry uh, elected to come back and, uh, you know, to, to, to be a part of what we're doing here moving forward. And, and I told him from the beginning, 
beginning, you know, I was going to challenge him every day to be to be the best version of himself and to, to, to be that consistent go to threat that uh, that could really change and impact a game. And you know, he's he is he has embraced that. He understands that the the, uh, uh, the growth of what he's been able to do mentally and and some of the different things that we've been able to put him in position to do. Uh, I think he's excited about. But then there's also some great great pieces around him. But whether it's uh, you know Pokey Wilson has done done a remarkable job throughout camp. You know you've got guys like Warren Thompson. Um, you know Jordan Young. Um, you know obviously uh, everybody talks about Keyshawn Helton and coming off an injury and the work that he put in throughout right. this off season. So very impressed with that young man. And so I'm excited about what this group holds at the receiver spot. And you know I think that I think we can expect big things from them. When you were first announced as head coach, and since then, hardcore fans have dug in. They've gone back and looked at tape of Memphis. Not everybody dives into that degree, but how would you characterize or explain what your offense is? Uh, this is an offense that's built for playmakers, and uh, you know it's going to be it's going to be unique each and every year to the guys that we have. I, I think it's our job as offensive coaches uh, to put our guys in a position to to showcase their skill set mm-hmm. and to make sure we play to their strengths. And so, uh, you know, every year that I've that, that I've been a coach, whether it was an offensive coordinator or a head coach, I mean, we've looked different in some aspects, and that's our our job. You know, here is to make sure that that we're putting our guys in a great position to showcase uh, you know their ability and and what they can do. And uh, you know, I've got I've got great confidence in the guys that we have. It's a home game this week, and so normally this would be a road question, but I, and it's not specific to the offense, I guess, but the fact that you won't have full stadiums, the energy will feel different. How do you prepare your team for that, or is there really nothing to do? It's just like a practice, and you just have to lock in mentally. Well, it's a, it's the same thing that we talked about earlier. You know, you control what you can control, and uh, you know we don't ever control the atmosphere. We don't ever control the crowds or in any aspect of, of that. Um, you know, but we can we control our energy. We control our focus. We control the the, the intensity which we bring to every snap. And uh, you know, I can tell you, our guys are excited about getting an opportunity to play the game here Saturday, and uh, I look forward to seeing them out there. 3.30 kick. We'll get to defense in a moment. I'll remind you, football season is here. That means it's time to load up on the best snacks and some delicious ice-cold Coke for all your game day guests. Nothing tastes like everyone you love and everything you like coming together. Coca-Cola together tastes better. This is Inside Seminole Football with head coach Mike Norvell, and we'll continue in a moment. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Football with head coach Mike Norvell. Coach, let's talk defense now. And there's been a lot of excitement about the potential of this defense with uh, a, a lot of really talented players there. I guess it starts with Marvin Wilson, who just like Terry announced he was coming back for another year. Marvin did the same thing. He's been a team leader. As you've gotten to know him, what's impressed you about Marvin both on and off the field? Well, you know, starting off with the decision to come back. I think not only does that show, um, you know, who he is and the desire that he has to continue to improve and to continue to, to grow, but but it also shows the importance of this program to him mm-hmm. and the legacy that he leaves. And uh, that, you know, his his maturity throughout this throughout this uh, off season, the, leaders, the leader that he is continuing to to be for our program and the consistency of what he's showing up day in and day out, uh, you know that's what I'm most proud of. And you know the sky's the limit for what Marvin can accomplish. And you know he's really uh, been a great example for a lot of our young players to see you know how this should be done. You know the the effort he gives in practice, the the kind of you know, he's always taking notes, always wanting to, to to absorb more information, and then you know really try to work to apply it out there on the football field. And so um, you know I, I'm I'm honored for the opportunity to coach him, and I think that he's going to help you know spearhead that defense the front, which is, I think, has an opportunity to be a really uh, impactful unit for us. You know, I like I like our depth. I like some of the, the additions we've been able to, to bring into that. And, you know, a lot of the returning talent, uh, you know, it presents for a great opportunity for us to, to impact the game with that unit. You may be speaking specifically to the tackles or the defensive line as a group, but one person that, that jumped out and you honored him a week ago for his performance at camp, and that's Josh Kando at the end spot. Uh, what did he do uh, to, to merit those honors? I um, mean, just showed up every single day and he worked. And uh, yeah. you know, it didn't matter if it was, it was in the off season with some of his uh, rehabilitation, you know, coming off of an injury last year uh, to what he was doing academically to, to obviously whenever he was cleared to be able to get on the field. I mean, every day he had a purpose, and that purpose mm-hmm. for improving Movement, that purpose for growth to, to help in, inspire others with the work ethic that he showed um, and I was just so pleased with what what I was able to witness from him and you know th- that showed up in his production I mean his, the, the production that he had in practice was remarkable I mean it, it's also you know helping to push guys like uh, Janarius Robinson there on the other side you know we'd mentioned some of the defensive tackles you know Robert Robert Cooper you get a you know you know, obviously a uh, Corey Durden you get you add, add uh, you know a young man in Fabian Lovett that was a transfer that's got a lot of playing experience 
uh, you know, in his previous institution. You know, that group, I, I think, with that type of leadership of a Marvin and, and Kendo, I mean, it, it can it can really help this program. And uh, you know, obviously, what we're doing on the on the defensive side of the ball. Fan questions are presented by Tijuana Flats, the Knolls' number one Tex-Mex pick. This question comes from William in Tallahassee. I, I joked earlier about pop, uh, you know, offense sells popcorn. His question, can defense still win championships? How can the defense help improve the offense? Oh, I mean, I, I think it means everything to, ha to have a, a defense that can go out there and really uh, you, you, you kind of set the mindset of the game and uh, you'll be able to, to help impact field position with defense and special teams, you know, that, you know, help create takeaways to give, to put our offense in a, in a positive uh, uh, position. I mean, that's something that, uh, that, that we're gonna, that we're gonna uh, obviously pour a huge uh, a part of our, our energy and our emphasis too. And, you know, our guys embrace that challenge. They, they know the depth that we have. They know the competition that we have every day in practice. You know, the development of, of our linebackers and defensive backs, uh, a lot of young talent there in those positions. And, I mean, they are pushing guys that have played a lot of snaps here, you know, here in, in years past. And so, you know, the, these guys, they, they embrace that uh, the responsibility that, that comes with uh, what, what the expectation here at Florida State and, and the way that we play defense. That's something that we need to live up to when it, when it comes to our standard and, and obviously the expectation here moving forward. I should have mentioned that uh, Marvin Wilson was, was preseason All-ACC as well. He's on all the all the uh, preseason all-star list, but but Asante Samuel has gotten garnered a lot of attention too. So you mentioned young guys, and he's he's been here a couple of years now, but uh, he sort of headlines a very deep group there. So I'll I'll start there and let you expand the conversation to who is, is how he's performed and who else has impressed you through camp in the secondary. Yeah, I mean uh, absolutely. I mean I think uh, Asante has done a, done a remarkable job in his training and and the preparation of the season. Um, you know, obviously with a with a new scheme and a, and a, you know obviously a change in the coaching staff. I mean it's it. It takes a level of buy-in and trust that has to be built over time, and uh, you know he has really embraced that process. Um, you know, one of my favorite experiences for, from ball camp was a, a you know opportunity we were doing a one-on-one -on -one drill, and you know uh, Asante made just a great play against a young uh, one of our younger receivers, and I heard him right after the play. He went up and was giving pointers to the receiver on how to beat him. And, you know, that, that's the mark of a great player. When somebody is pushing to get to, to – he wants to be pushed. He wants to be challenged. And, you know, because he knows that's, that's going to only do, do things to elevate his game. And, you know, that, uh, you know, that role and responsibility has been, has been something that uh, he's embraced. And I think it's really made everybody in the, in the back end better. I mean, we've got – like I said, we've got a lot of great uh, and uh, talented guys. Um, there's going to be a ton of competition. And hopefully we'll be able to see a lot of guys play and, and make it, those impactful plays. Asante Samuel Jr., I should point out. Apologies, Asante. What about at the linebacker position? You, there, there's young talent there. Uh, there's some other guys who have, uh, you know, maybe rededicated and, and bought in, like a Leonard Warner. Uh, just collectively, that group and your impressions. Well, absolutely. And, you, and you, we've seen a lot of guys at that position. You know, you, know, we, you mentioned Leonard. You, you got Emmett Rice. You know, Amari Gaynor. I mean, all, all guys that have that have played some good football here mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. But you know, then you, you're able to kind of bring you know some young guys into the mix. You know, Kalen Deloach. Uh, um, you you know, a, 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 a Kay, um, Dick Halen Brooks there out on the edge, but then also on the interior, you know, young freshmen like Steven Dix, uh, you know, DJ Lundy, uh, I'll tell you, you know, Jaleel McCray. I mean, that is that is as good of a looking group of young linebackers that can run and hit and bring that physical aspect of the game. It's really pushing those older guys. And so uh, I feel good about where that position is, but, you know, we're going to need them to play at a very high level here moving forward because, you know, in this day of day of age, I mean, your, your defense is, has got to be prepared to play against a lot of different looks and, and different personnel packages, and I think their versatility is going to allow us um, you know, a, a lot of different ways that we can attack. We will be joined, as I mentioned earlier, by James Blackman in a little bit, also the head strength and conditioning coach here uh, at Florida State. So, Coach, as, as we wrap things up with you, you know, there's always nerves that go with game one. No matter how well you practice, I'm sure as a coach, you still wonder what you're going to get when toe meets leather, to use Gene's expression. But what do you want, what do you need to see from your team this Saturday against Georgia Tech? You know, I, I want to see those guys go out there and, and to truly show the preparation they put in. And, uh, you know, I know you're going to have Josh, uh, you know, Josh Storms, our, direct, our, our director of strength conditioning, you know, here in just a minute. And uh, he's done a remarkable job. The work that they did in the winter conditioning, uh, you know, building us up to spring, the, the difference you see in our guys physically, um, the 
mindset, the approach. I mean, I want to, I want those guys to go out there and showcase all of the growth that they've had, and not only from the physical aspect, from the mental aspect. Uh, you know, to go out there and play with purpose and with passion, to play disciplined seminal football in every aspect of what mm -hmm. we do. And then, you know, at the at the end of the day, let's go maximize our potential. I mean, it, this is game one, and uh, you know, we can control the things that we can control. And if these guys will, will continue throughout this week to, to perform at an elite level, then they get put themselves in a best position to do that uh, on the field here on Saturday. Florida Farm Bureau Insurance wants you to see your Florida State Seminoles take on the Clemson Tigers at Doak Campbell Stadium this football season. Visit KnollsContest.com and register to win a weekend package including pregame hospitality, game tickets, hotel accommodations, and Knowles gear. Coach, it gets started this week. Look forward to uh, this show all season long. Best of luck. Thanks so very much and go Knowles. Go Knowles. All right, we are uh, not finished yet. We've got much more to come. Stay with us. Inside Seminole Football with head coach Mike Norvell continues in a moment. Welcome back. It is game week, week number one of Inside Seminole Football with head coach Mike Norvell, who just joined us uh, for the last several minutes. Now we're pleased to bring to the program, introduce uh, our viewers on ABC 27 and our listeners on the Learfield uh, IMG, on Seminole Sports Network from Learfield IMG College, the head strength and conditioning coach at Florida State, Josh Storms. Coach, welcome. Good. Good to be here. We are, we are excited to have you. I know you're glad to be at Florida State and excited for the opportunity, but you could have never imagined when you uh, packed the bags and moved to Tallahassee that you would not have a typical offseason. And uh, I guess before we get to how you had to adjust with the pandemic, uh, why don't you just walk us through, you know, the off-season program that got started probably in, in, in January or February. You did have an opportunity to go through that before things got shut down. Yeah, you know, we hit the ground here uh, a couple days after the Cotton Bowl and uh, started up with the, with the guys here on January 7th. Um, you know, got into our into our off-season program, uh, just laying some early foundational stuff, teaching our way of doing things, uh, helping some of those guys bounce back from some you know uh, postseason surgeries and things like that with the with the quick turnaround from the from the Sun Bowl to the winter program starting. Um, you know, let, had put, made some you know great progress through the winter, and then you know right leading up to spring break, all of a sudden the the, the plan changed. Yeah, the pandemic uh, early March, and then the world shuts down, and. I, I think avid football fans know that the strength and conditioning coach spends as much time or more time than, than the other position coaches or segment coaches do with the players. And, and you had to do that via Zoom. So th there's, the, there's the team building, trust building, but there's also guys are now home, displaced, don't necessarily have access to what you have at the weight room at Florida State. So how did you adjust to get guys to continue to work out in that time? Yeah, I mean, that was one of the, that was one of the biggest challenges for us because, uh, you know, Towards the end, towards the end of quarantine, at that point, we had actually been away from our guys longer than we had spent with our guys in the winter program. You know, we were together ten weeks, and at one point, we were apart twelve before we came back together. Um, so with us, you know, we're still in the early stages of, of building relationships and getting to know those guys, and most importantly, those guys getting to know us as well. So uh, between myself and my staff, um, we had the roster split up. Um, a lot of talking to guys, finding out, you know. Do they have access to a place to train? If not, you know, do they have anything at home? Some guys had, you know, this or that. Some guys had nothing. And then it was a matter of like getting together and trying to figure out what the best plan was for for kind of each of those category of guys to try to be as individual as we could away. And then we, you know, we check in on those guys a couple times a week. You know, make sure they're doing okay. Make sure they have what they need. Um, working with uh, Marissa, our dietitian, getting those guys supplements, getting uh, meal plans set up, and those things. And, and you know, we knew going into that that. There was no optimal program or optimal situation when those are your the box you're working in. So our, our biggest hope was just to do it a little bit better than that next school down the road. What were the results like when the players came back? And I'll follow that up with because I think of the one key element that was missing when you work out or when you're running, you're being pushed by the guy next to you. And if you're home by yourself, not everybody can push quite as hard. So when you got the guys back together, I mean, how did you bridge that? And when you got the guys back together, what, what did you think of the results? Yeah, you know, we had a few, I, I won't say surprises, but just some things we didn't quite anticipate. I think we anticipated a really big loss of strength over that amount of time. Because you have some guys that are, you know, uh, guys a 600 pound squatter that, you know, coach, I only got 300 pounds of weight in my garage. Well, now the guys got, can only operate off of 50% of his max for a long period of time. So we gotta try to find ways to help make that weight work for that guy. But what we did find when guys came back was the overall level of like retention of strength was much better than we anticipated. Uh, we were able to start back quite a bit of higher intensity than what we had initially planned on. Uh, the, the, the biggest thing was just getting the conditioning back. Um, and it is, it's different when you're running at home alone and different with the coach on a stopwatch, you know, and that was the biggest readjustment to those guys. Plus coming back into kind of a modified summer program, those guys haven't been with us for a summer. So they didn't even know what they get ready to come back to. 
So, you know, a lot of guys, they did a great job of following that plan. But nonetheless, it is when you're on your own, it's easy to run your rep and check your rest. And, you know, all of a sudden that 30 seconds becomes 45 a minute and you're going again. Meanwhile, when you come back and coach is saying, all right, here go 30 seconds, you go 10, five, we're gone. You know, and that, that changes, that changes the game a lot. But those guys did a great job of being eager, approaching the work when they came back, of trying to make back of that lost time. And I really think the extended period of time off really not only did put a lot of ownership on those guys throwing development, but I think those guys understood the sense of urgency and the importance of I need to try to stay ready. I don't know how long this is going to go, but eventually it will be over. There, there, there is an end date at some point. Well, I can't make up for it then. I'm going to try to stay on track now. You referenced it already, but the modified summer program, and this feels like a lifetime ago as we're in game week now, but there was a lot of talk before we knew if we were going to get to this point about how much time players need to acclimate back. I mean, this was the conversation for, for several weeks. So it, it was modified. What was different? Uh, how was it different before you got into camp itself? You know, so initially when we came back, we were split up into to smaller groups. Um, kind of staggered throughout the day. And kind of what we did is we divide, we separate our team basically into like a two-a-day workout plan. Because we knew coming back with the level of conditioning, the level of work capacity, we knew we'd be behind where we'd normally be at that time of year. Um, so, you know, we look at like, okay, a normal block of training is two hours long. Well, can we really get quality work for two hours right now? Probably not, okay? Guys will be on fumes by the end of that. So what we did was split them up to where, you know, they may come lift in the morning, you know, so 45 minutes to an hour, and then they have about a five-hour gap. They'd come back in the afternoon to, to get their field work session in. And then we would just flip-flop offense, defense, skill, and big skill. So we had, you know, two groups going on at a time, whether they were in the, on the grass or in the IPF or in the weight room. But we kept that two-a-day approach for the first almost month of our, of our time back building that work capacity up, getting good quality work within, within that smaller time frame, and then started, okay, Tomorrow, we're going we're gonna to hit both these sessions at the same time. Let's see how we handle this. And our guys are showing us they're ready for that. So we got down to a condensed session, putting the field work and the lift together in the same session at a time, um, which is a little close to what we'd normally do in the summertime and started to progress from there. I'm going to put you on the spot. I don't know if you want to go there. But regarding individuals, are there some guys that you can call out? That the, I mean, these are the guys that, that, hit, that did the best job in the, in the offseason? Yeah, I mean, we had – we had a lot of guys doing an exceptional job, and it, this is always such a hard question, especially with this team right now, is by bringing up that bring up, bring up that one guy, or those two guys, that, that really cuts a lot of guys out. It, it's it, it's probably almost easier to name it on the other end than it is not. Cause we had well, so I, won't, guys. I won't put you on that spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we had a, a, a you know a large group of guys did a phenomenal job in their time away. The guys that were resourceful and creative and followed the process through and just guys were, you know, problem solvers and found a way to still still make the result happen at the end of the day. Well, I know it's been several months, Coach, but uh, welcome, belated welcome to Florida State. Maybe Appreciate now it. we can settle into some more normalcy here. We'll kick off the season. Look forward to uh, the work that you and your staff and the whole staff can do this year. Absolutely. He is the head strength and conditioning coach at Florida State. Josh Storms and Inside Seminole Football with Coach Mike Norvell continues in a moment. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Football with head coach Mike Norvell. Really pleased to bring Florida State's starting quarterback to the program, James Blackman, a, a veteran at this point. James, it's good to see you. And uh, just, I guess, first of all, summarize getting to know Coach Mike Norvell and just fall camp as you get set for your first game of this season. Um, like I said before, uh, it's been a great experience um, with Coach Norvell and how he, do, how he does things, the organization of things. Um, the focus and details of things, and I feel like it's been a great experience, a great learning experience for me, um, the younger guys, and I feel like we've been learning a lot since he's been here in these last couple of months, and uh, it's just been a great experience putting in work with Coach Norvell, and I feel like we've been putting in great work in how we've um, come so far. I'll get to camp in a, in, a, in a bit because you guys have had a chance to spend a lot of time together of late, but... Uh, there was a period after you went through winter conditioning, I mean, March, April, May, I guess it was June when you came back, that had to be surreal to try and stay focused and, and work out. Were you at home? Just kind of tell us what that part of uh, this offseason was like for you. Um, it was kind of hard, um, not having the resources that we were used to, being able to come into the facility, get our normal workouts in, um, normal lift groups. So just had to maintain, staying in shape, um, body weight, um, trying to make sure we're doing all the things that we can, we're not having the nutrition. Um, it was kind of tough, but we did uh, a great job of coming back. A lot of guys had picked up a lot of weight. A lot of guys had got stronger using the resources that they had. 
What did you work on personally during that time? Um, just trying to stay focused, locked in um, into the playbook. Like like all other schools, we had meetings every day in the mm -hmm. morning, um, and they'll roll over to the afternoon sometimes um, if we voluntarily wanted to. But um, just trying to make sure I stayed ahead of the game with the playbook and um, just watch film every day so I could be ready for um, fall camp. I'm, I'm going to drill deeper as we go back to questions to, from our fans presented by Tijuana Flats, the Knowles' number one Tex-Mex pick. Uh, this is Jerry from Tallahassee. And, uh, Basic question is how have you adapted to yet another system? I mean, this is what three, four offensive coordinators or systems really in your time here. So how difficult has that challenge been? New system, new terminology, new personalities with offensive coordinator and head coach to adjust to? Um, just getting better each and every day, just up in the minutes that I'm watching film every day, just going through the different installs that the coaches have up for us and just making sure I hone in onto the small details of what the coaches are saying and what they're asking for from us. So I was just paying attention, just making sure I had laser focus and I was locked in. Coach Norvell calls it an offense built for playmakers. Now that you've gone through fall camp, an extended fall camp really with the acclimation period, how would you describe the offense? Um, just like you said, an offense um, for the playmakers. It shows and displays our playmakers in different aspects, shows their talents, and just be able to show, let them show their traits and uh, let us play ball. I know at this point, especially after a long, hot camp, everybody always says they're ready to see somebody in a different uniform. <laughs> Well, yeah, and that, that expression tells it all. So no uh, that has to be more true than ever right now. But um, is this offense ready? I mean, how, com how comfortable, how confident are you guys that it's time to see somebody else? Um, to be honest, I'm very confident with our guys. Uh, I know we're going to go into this week. Um, we already been putting in a lot of work. We're going to put in extra work this week, make sure we hone into the uh, final details and the final expectations from the coaches. And I feel like we're going to have a great, great showing on Saturday. For you personally, what, what has changed or, or maybe have things changed in your approach or how you'll approach this game, how you'll study, how you'll mentally rep to go um, against Georgia Tech? Um, to be honest, my biggest focus is just take care of the ball. We take care of the ball. We'll put ourselves in a great position to win game. What have you seen from Georgia Tech on tape when you look at them? Um, they do a, a certain amount of things of how they fit the box with the different guys from in the boundary, the way they play the bracket to the field. Um, it's going to be a, a, great, a great challenge, and we're going to go out there and handle our business. When I look at the offensive depth chart, uh, there's guys who've been around. I mean, you've been around a few years, but there's still only a couple seniors on there, I guess, on the right side of the offensive line. Uh, in, in this offseason, in this environment, and not being together, I mean, who's emerged as, as leaders of this offense? Um, honestly, like the younger guy, Cam McDonald, um, he had picked up a big role of uh, helping lead this offense. Um, Tamari and Terry with the receiver group, uh, he's taking a, a big role of leading his guys in the receiver room and making sure he set the example each and every day. And we have a special running back group too. Uh, I feel like all those guys have uh, put in the work and, and showed their leadership within the team and help us get going. I think because Cam Akers got so many carries and, and so many snaps the last few years. And because people have not seen the running backs you're talking about, we're, we're all excited, but we don't know what to expect. Can you give us a, an idea of what you've seen from these guys that uh, are in the running back room? Um, like I said, that's a very special group. They're a very hard working group. Um, they're together, they come as one. Um, Coach Yak have done a tremendous job just coaching those guys up and making sure they're prepared for each, each practice each and every day. And so I feel very confident in the running back room. And, you know, Cam Akers, that's a very special player, but I really do feel very confident in the running back that we have right now. And you mentioned Tamari and Terry. It was, it was a win for Florida State and for Coach Norvell when he announced he was coming back for another year. What, what have you seen from him now? Because you've been here his entire career. Uh, what, what's different or what do you see just as he has matured more? Um, I see another level of, of focus. Um, he's a lot more locked in, um, a lot more like ready. He just, he just want to win. That's, that's his biggest thing. And you can tell, the, tell by the way that he come to practice, the way he come to work. He's very determined and he, he's just ready to win. He want to do whatever he can to help his team win. Offensive line, that's the question that gets asked all the time. I know you've been asked about it. What have you seen from the group up front? Um, to be honest, I feel like that's the most put together group that we have on offense right now. I feel like they put in a lot of work to learning their plays, understanding the concept, understanding the blocking scheme, and understanding the expectation that Coach Novell wants from them. And I feel like they took a tremendous stride over these past few months of learning what they needed to learn and putting in a lot of work. And I feel like they're going to have a great showing come Saturday. They've been putting in a lot of work and gotten a lot better. The guys you're, you competed with, the guys you battled to, to, to win the starting quarterback job, uh, we've seen a little bit of Jordan. We haven't seen the freshman. Obviously, Chubba got hurt. But uh, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about what we should expect there and what you've seen out of those guys? Um, I honestly feel like this quarterback room is back to all the old quarterback rooms uh, of, Florida, of Florida State. 
Um, we have a tre tremendous talent in, in the quarterback room. Um, either one of us could play, to be honest. Uh, I feel like those guys have done a great job mm -hmm. of learning the system, um, honing in and learning the system as well. And we just have a great group of guys, and I love being in that room with them guys. How anxious are you right now? I don't mean anxious, nervous. I just mean excited. Um, if they say, James Blackman, let's play right now. I'm ready to play right now. <laughs> <laughs> and is that, I'm sure that sentiment's shared by your teammates. Has it been a, a tougher mental grind than usual, just the, the not really knowing if this would get here? Um, no doubt. Just trying to stay focused on what we do every day and not just let the outside noise distract us. James, we look forward to uh, this season. Uh, just uh, final thought for you. What's, what's going to go through your mind when you take the field this Saturday? I'm just thankful for another opportunity. Well, we're, we're excited for the opportunity for you. We look forward to seeing uh, what you can do, what this offense can do, what this team can do. Best of luck to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. He is James Blackman, the starting quarterback at Florida State. The season gets started 3.30 Saturday against Georgia Tech. We'll be back with more Inside Seminole Football with head coach Mike Norvell right after this. Thanks so much for joining us this week on the inaugural edition of Inside Seminole Football with head coach Mike Norvell. We'll come your way each and every Monday at 7 o'clock throughout the football season, both on ABC and on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. For our producer engineer, Chris Culp, and our crew from ABC 27, Tom Block saying so long. We'll see you next time on Inside Seminole Football with head coach Mike Norvell.